All right, with hemispheric lateralization, um, it's pretty interesting. The two halves of our brain, the left half and the right half of our brain, are actually responsible for different functions. So it says the two cerebral hemispheres are sharing many functions, but each perform a unique function. Um, so here it says our left hemisphere is gonna control the, our right side of our body, and it also controls things like spoken and written language. Remember, that's where Broca's and Wernicke's area are, is usually on the left side. It's also um, responsible for numerical and scientific skills. So if you are very analytical, very science-oriented, very math-oriented, or if you are very language-oriented, you could be left-brained. The left hemisphere is more dominant. On the other hand, the right hemisphere controls the left side of our brain, or of our body, I mean, um, and it's going to be more um, uh, involved in creativity. So it says um, musical and artistic awareness, space and pattern perception, insight, imagination, generating mental images. When I say like picture a black cube with fire coming out, you can picture that, that's your right brain. Um, also sound, touch, taste, and smell. So if you are very uh, artistic, very musical, if you uh, love cooking, uh, if you're good at uh, imagination, uh, that is more right brain. So I've got a um, I've got a little diagram here that kind of shows this broken up more visually. So the left side of the brain, spoken, written language, numeric and scientific skills. Uh, it says sign language, reasoning. Uh, with our right brain, musical and artistic awareness, space and pattern perception, uh, recognizing faces and emotional content of facial expressions. Um, emotional context of language, generating mental images, that's all right-brained. Now what's kind of interesting, it says specialization of one hemisphere or the other is more pronounced in men. So men are either really left-brained or they tend to be really right-brained. The balance isn't as common in men as in women. It says women uh, generally have larger connections between both sides, so you're more balanced. So you may, uh, uh, many more women are not really either highly left or highly right-brained. That doesn't mean they can't be, it just means that it's not as common. Um, I think another, oops, another really interesting thing about this is that um, your, uh, you can kind of think about what you are. Are you really left-brained? or are you really right-brained? And so if you are really uh, left-brained, you know, you're gonna be really good at science and that kind of thing, math. If you're really right-brained, you're gonna be really good at arts and uh, uh, music awareness. Women, because they're more balanced, uh, you know, you, you might uh, be good at a variety of different things. I kind of think about myself. I really feel like I'm balanced. I started college out as a music major. I really loved art in high school. I was in music all through my middle school and high school years. So I really liked uh, music and things like that. But I am now, you know, a scientist and I do scientific skills. Um, and so I feel like I'm pretty balanced, even though I'm a man. Um, I don't really have a pronounced uh, hemisphere one way or the other. I always joke that I'm really not good at anything. I'm kind of mediocre at a lot of stuff. And uh, that kind of attributes to this balance. I'm not really good at one specific thing, but I'm mediocre at everything. And so <laughs> that's kind of how, how I work. Interestingly, it says damage to the left side of our brain can cause aphasia, you know, that um, lack of understanding written or spoken language or knowing what you want to say but you can't say it. That's aphasia. Damage to the same area on the right side, because this is our emotional awareness side, 
can lead to speech with little emotional inflection. So you kind of sound like Alexa or Siri, you know, when the, uh, hello, welcome to anatomy and physiology one. I am your professor, professor Garhart. Today we will be talking about hemispheric lateralization of the brain. Hemispheric lateralization of the brain is more pronounced in men. So, you know, like no emotional, like I can get really emotional, like, Oh, I can't believe it. You know, or, you know, you, you can, um, you can produce those, uh, emotional inflections in your brain or in your, in your brain, you can produce them from your brain on the right side. So if that area is damaged, like through a stroke, it could affect how someone's emotional inflection occurs as they speak. Okay. Uh, so we can measure our brain waves in an electroencephalogram. A lot like an EKG, an electrocardiogram for the heart, the electroencephalogram can pick up brain waves. So we can pick up action potentials in the brain. So there are four major brain waves, alpha, beta, theta, and delta. And uh, they are used to diagnose uh, brain disorders like epilepsy and of course brain death if there's no action potentials produced in an electroencephalogram in a uh, two in a 24-hour period uh, this is how doctors can diagnose brain death now the alpha waves are going to be um, active during your uh, awake and resting stage. So you're just sitting here kind of listening to me blab on and make all the mistakes I was just making on the last PowerPoint slide and not being able to talk and blah, blah, blah. Uh, your alpha waves are firing. So you are awake and resting. Your beta waves are the mental activity. So when you're concentrating, you've got these beta waves going crazy. When you're taking a test, your beta waves are um, more active. The theta waves are your emotional stress. So hopefully all of you are, you know, kind of stress free and these are just tootling along at a low rate. If you get really emotional, if you have a lot of stress, they could be off the charts. So hopefully your beta waves are going really nice and your theta waves are just kind of trickling along. Delta waves are going to be your sleep waves. So uh, as we dream and as we sleep, we can we can look at these delta waves. So we've got these four basic waves of the uh, electroencephalogram. Pretty sweet. All right. So let's stop this video here because um, I don't know if it'll take one or two videos, but I want to go into some disorders and imbalances of the brain and then we'll be done with this chapter. So hang in there. We're almost there.